Like something out of Lord of the Rings or Macbeth, satellite images have shown the entire boreal forest shifting upward. The boreal or northern biome is the largest biome or ecological habitat on land and the forest cover comprising of nearly 25% of all trees on land. These forests cover the Arctic regions of Norway, Sweden, Finland, Russia, parts of Iceland, parts of Scotland, Canada, Alaska, and also parts of Kazakhstan, northern Mongolia, and northern Japan. Analysis of images show that climate change is wreaking havoc here, and the entire biome is slowly moving northwards towards the Arctic Pole. How does this shifting upwards of trees physically look as trees grow and die? How long does data need to be taken to conclude that trees are shifting upward in latitude? And what is causing this movement of the biome? Well, at least the answer to the last one is pretty obvious. Since climate effects are cumulative, we are now starting to see and observe extreme effects from global heating on the regular. Clearly, there is something extremely unsettling happening every day. It is natural that as the earth warms, the equator warms the most and we know that temperature sensitive organisms, including humans, will start migrating towards higher latitudes. Towards the poles, this looks like the polar regions becoming warmer and more habitable closer to the conditions of temperate regions as they are ideally supposed to be. We can see this playing out in a surreal manner with these boreal forests. These forests occupy the high temperate and subpolar zones and on land make up the largest ecosystem or biome with a quarter of the planet's forested areas. It occupies an area of over 15 million square kilometers. Boreal forest or boreal biome is also called the taiga. Landsat images from 1985 to 2019 show how the forest area is in fact shifting northward to a higher latitude towards the North Pole. So how do these forests shifting upward actually look like? When satellite images are observed, we can see that there is an increase in browning in the southern edge of these forests, showing that the trees here are dying and the dying ones were not getting replaced with newer green ones. And on the other side, along the northern edge of these forests, there was increased greening that kept creeping upwards over the past few decades. We can tell very evidently that the shifting is because of increased warming on both edges of the forest. Warmer temperatures along higher latitudes mean longer growing seasons because there is less snow. So, forests start to grow here because they are able to. But there are also other indirect factors that can facilitate and promote plant growth other than just the increase in temperature. In fact, this very increase in temperature causes a whole host of other changes that facilitate this growth. There's the soil nitrogen levels, for example. The researchers noticed that areas that were greening tended to have higher soil nitrogen levels. This is because as the snow melts in these polar and subpolar regions, microbes are woken up and they start to break down organic matter that comes there as vegetation starts to grow. This then releases nitrogen, which in turn facilitates more plant growth. Over the last four decades, there has been a constant browning and greening pattern visible with the entire forest range very visibly shifting northward. But the trend also indicates that this speed of shift is slowing. This is not really good news. Counterintuitively, it is exactly the opposite. The shift is slowing because there isn't enough greening to make up for the increased browning happening from below. The trees are basically dying at a much faster rate with each passing year overall. Also overall, the entire boreal forest itself is shrinking. Once its area starts to shrink, its shift will also be slow because there are fewer trees overall. But more alarmingly, the largest forested area on Earth is shrinking and is doing so rapidly. With climate, we constantly see that everything is a feedback loop and one change feeds into the other and exacerbates it. So what happens with snow and ice? 
we are already familiar mm. with the fact that snow and ice help Earth's albedo or reflectivity. A higher albedo or higher reflectivity helps keep the planet cool by reflecting sunlight back to space. But as snow and ice melts, it is replaced with tree cover in this case, which is much darker, so there will be more sunlight absorption. So overall temperatures in the polar regions will go up now because of the forest growth itself. This might once again seem counterintuitive because we keep hearing about how trees keep the weather and climate cool. But that's here in the tropical and equatorial regions. Trees can cool, but not to the extent that snow and ice can. Trees themselves cannot grow in ice. So trees replacing ice is a very, very bad deal for our planet. The boreal forests are also spreading through the permafrost. Permafrost is permanent frost, yes, but it is covered with a layer of insulating seasonal snowfall that protects the ice underneath from seasonal changes. But as vegetation grows, this top insulating layer of snow will disappear. So this will also speed up the melting of permafrost, which we already know has given us a preview of horrors to come, such as anthrax, which was released from trapped ice after thousands of years. Permafrost melting is already releasing a lot of trapped carbon dioxide and especially methane. All the melting snow is replaced by more land and more dark leafed trees and the feedback loop just keeps getting strengthened, just like melting sea ice. Anything that replaces ice and is not freezing and not snow white in color is going to add to the warming feedback. This is what is happening along the greening edge of the forest. Below, along the browning edge, the lack of trees is going to cause an increase in carbon dioxide and also drastically raise temperatures now in Eurasia and North America. This, of course, in turn will affect the jet stream and other climate phenomena and affect the entire world. All of this is not even touching the effects on wildlife ecosystems. If trees take over subpolar regions, lichens will start to die out, for example. And lichens are a source of food for many animals, big and small, in these forests. Other animals that now don't exist in large numbers will start feeding on newly growing shrubs and taking over the landscape. And this in turn will have cascading effects on even more animal and plant life. Ecological engineers like caribou and beavers that shape the landscape around them are affected with their populations going up and down. So the way the forest itself is structured and shaped will start to change. Now, naturally, such drastic and extreme reduction in global tree cover and forested area means that there is going to be a worsening of extreme weather events, including heat waves, forest fires, droughts and landslides. These will increase in intensity and frequency, and this is expected to happen in the immediate future. So once again, we are reminded of the dire need for better and more efficient climate monitoring and sensing, which is becoming imperative to improve our ability to even handle our near future. <laughs>